In this video, I'm interviewing Trevor Fox and ask him how he became a technical marketer. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials and the occasional interview just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now this week I had the chance to talk to Trevor Fox who is a technical marketer and really knowledgeable in everything Google Analytics, App Script and a bunch of other techniques out there that I don't even know how to describe. But it was really interesting finding out what was Trevor's journey to go from somebody who had just started a little blog to somebody who is now helping clients with technical marketing solutions and what he has learned along the way. Now, if you want to find out more about Trevor and all his projects, but also the links that he mentions in this interview, then check out our description below where we're going to have more stuff for you to check out. All right, now we got lots to cover, so let's get into the interview. All right, Trevor Fox, welcome to the show. Thanks, uh, it's, it's really cool to be here. Um, congratulations on all the growth you've had so far. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting to watch you uh, grow from the start. Oh, thank you very much. So I wanna start out, um, we are talking today about technical marketing and uh, before you became a technical marketer, you probably first uh, jumped into marketing itself. So take us through your journey. Um, how did you start out in digital marketing and uh, what was your journey from the beginning? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a weird question. So when I was in high school, um, I thought I was going to do landscape architecture. Uh, I ended up playing uh, baseball in college. So I learned very quickly that I wouldn't have the time to do landscape architecture and baseball in college. So I had to do communications. Um, and after college, I was kind of like, well, what am I going to do with a communications degree? Meanwhile, I ended up um, learn, uh, getting an opportunity to play professionally for three years. And meanwhile, while I was playing, I, um, I started a blog and I kind of discovered this crazy thing called Google Analytics. And I was like, wow, there's a ton of insight in here. Um, and I can like kind of see how so many people across the world are interacting with me. And that kind of just starts the magic of, of the internet and the web for me. Um, and so when I return without like any experience that my friends, you know, my friends have three years of work experience and I have zero and I'm like, well, how do I get into this? And then, um, I've, I got a, a kind of a really low level job at a web development or web development agency, not doing development, but doing marketing. And, um, I learned that, oh my gosh, I can actually track some like interaction on a website with JavaScript. And I was like, I need to know JavaScript immediately. And that is like, I, it wasn't HTML, it wasn't, you know, anything else. It was how can I, you know, interact with a page um, with JavaScript and then also learn at the time like, oh, wow, um, JavaScript also allows me to, to do custom macros and things um, in Google Apps Script. So I was like, there's a, there, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg. It's like, there's a lot here and all it's, it's just, it's just there for the taking. And so that, um, I kind of found that just to be a really quick way to kind of move up the ladder in terms of capabilities. So when you started out your blog, did, what was your blog about? And did you build it yourself? Um, was it any, <laughs> any on, on a website builder? Um, yeah. what did you learn while you were building a website? Um, and did you do any kind of marketing for that, for, for your little project? Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, so I started, I started on Squarespace, uh, it, and, and like, look, in hindsight, it was probably good to get going. And I'll also be honest, I was probably guilty of thinking too much that if you build it, they will come. I remember my first, um, post was, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with the look and feel of the website. I obviously didn't do much. Uh, was what is Facebook basic information? Just because you know, when you sign up for something, you log in with Facebook, um, it asks you for your basic information. I was like, hmm, you know, what if is this? Is there a lot more to this? Um, and then I saw like one hit a week, two hits a week, um, and so so then yeah, it's kind of like learn really quickly about SEO when you're firsthand growing it and like see the impact of like, whoa, my first link, what does that have? What impact does that have? And, um, and then being a little bit more mindful about keyword targeting, things like that. 
Um, so then it, it starts to pick up. But then, yeah, moved to WordPress. Now, you know, a few years later, I can write enough PHP to get anything done I need to on, on the WordPress site. So, yeah. I'm just pressing on this because uh, it's really interesting how many people started out with like kind of a sandbox with something small that they can grow and they tinker around with it and make a lot of mistakes, right? So yeah. um, if, if you go into the technical marketing field, um, you have a lot of background of like, how does a website work? How does it actually, how can I build links and uh, make SEO work and then uh, go into these these other fields? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so how did you discover, because uh, people or uh, marketers sometimes think that they don't have to learn any kind of technical skills. How did you discover this, um, uh, that you wanted to learn JavaScript and that you actually kind of fun, having fun um, learning it and then putting it into action? Well, I think there's a couple of things there. Um, Self-sufficiency, where I would want to track like a, a certain um, call to action on a website. And I was working with a lot of hotel clients and like this is critical, right? When you're doing PPC for uh, hotel clients. Um, and if I had to pull a developer off of the project that they're responsible for, they're kind of hate me because they have to take a lot of time um, to do it. And they don't, you know, it's not like this really easy process. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't, wasn't too long before Google Tag Manager came along and I mean, that was like wild, wild west days of Google Tag Manager. So we were all kind of like hacking it together and we've got all gotten a little bit better now. But um, but yeah, so just um, being able to do it on my own uh, is just obviously it feels really good. And it's also just a really effective way to get things done. Um, the second part, like why do why did I enjoy learning it? I think the, the one thing that's really cool about learning programming is the rapid feedback loop. And like, if you're, you know, there's no other thing where you can be like, oh, I, I'm learning about agile and like, I have to learn this huge system and all these processes, but like, I can't actually know how they work until I actually do them. Um, whereas programming, you can just type in some commands and see the input or the output that they have. And so you can learn really, really quickly. And that's, I mean, that, that's just super fun too. You know, you're real, you're learning and you're having fun at the same time. So, yeah. Cool. Um, so when you dove into JavaScript or the other um, languages that you learned, what was your process like? Did you uh, go through tutorials? Um, did you have a mentor that, that um, helped you out and reviewed your code? Um, or did you work alongside any kind of professional developers and learned, picked up that stuff really quickly? That's a, that's a really great question. Um, I, <laughs> I didn't have a girlfriend. I lived by myself. And like every spare minute I had, I was uh, dedicated to Code Academy, um, which is a great platform for learning because it, you know, it allows that rapid feedback loop. Um, then, you know, naturally, when you can learn to speak the language of developers, you can start to grab, I mean, get a lot of their um, knowledge really quickly. So I kind of um, anybody who I and I still do like anybody I strike up a conversation with like it just happens to be a developer and the de the conversation turns into like an hour long conversation. Um, so just like meetups, um, just friends of friends. Anytime you 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 find somebody that like is pretty technical, they're generally like you and I are are interested in having conversations that are about technical things. So. Um, and I, I also found, obviously, one thing about the community is so cool that, like, GitHub, people are just giving stuff away for free. People are really, really um, interested in sharing knowledge, which I think is super cool. So I guess the, question, the, the thing is, find people that know stuff and don't be afraid to ask, I guess. And did you, I mean, f for me at least, when, when um, I'm uh, trying to make leaps forward in my technical knowledge, I try to pick a um, project that I can complete, right? I saw that you on your website have uh, great projects as well. Uh, how did that impact? And how, did, how do, you actually, um, do you actually come up with a project and then say, okay, I'm going to do this um, mainly for free because you're not selling it on your website, right? Yeah, I, I think, oh man, I've come up with more projects <laughs> that I can complete like in a lifetime. I don't know. I think it's just like... Um, when you, anytime you have a problem and you're like, 
and you recognize that there is something underlying with it. It could be solved with, um, you know, with a database or a little bit of scripting. It's like there's a project there for you. And I've never been, I've always been like, oh, here's a problem. It can definitely be solved. Um, and so I guess the, the toughest thing for me is actually just seeing it to completion <laughs> because I'll do like, I'll, I'll start it and then I'll be like, okay, well, this can be done. But to actually publish it is another thing. Um, so I'm kind of like constantly learning how to be more effective and more uh, efficient with my time on that. The stuff that you have built, and I think we all have these moments when, when we build stuff, we're pretty proud of ourselves. What was the one thing that you were, were proudest of where you said, man, I made this work. It might not be the greatest software at, uh, of all time, <laughs> but um, it, I worked really hard on this and I made it work and now it works and I can do this. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I think the real answer to this, which is like super pathetic, is the first time I'm, I like probably honestly the first time I made something that worked was um, Google Apps Script to make like a given cell red and like that's right. it <laughs> and i was like oh crap there's uh oh, this is real like it, it, it this is that like excitement that you get when you start programming and it's like the super mundane thing but then you know every time you you go forward and you do another project would be like you know make a twitter bot make um actually it'll make a website like i just made because of all the fake news stuff I made a website that allows you to make your own fake news and then post it online. So like it has a little Facebook box that says, you know, like Germany is voted number one country or something like that. And you can share it to all your friends. And oh, okay. I, I thought that was super fun. Um, and that like, I guess each time you make a little bit bigger project, it, you still get that like super validating experience so you you picked up uh, a lot of technical skills but there was a lo lot of marketing skills with your clients probably as well working on real-time projects um, mm -hmm. take us through what what does a typical project look like um, and how can you use your your technical marketing skills to um, um, to bring results to your yeah client? totally um, one client I was working with uh, e-commerce client uh, has its uh, male and female clothes um, and they had a problem where they didn't, they weren't really certain about the, uh, the gender of their, of their people on their email list. And, um, they do have the name, last name and email for each customer. And there's like a free API. I forget the name of the API. You can put it in the comments below, but, um, it's, uh, it just gives you a, it takes a name, a country and a country that's associated with that person and gives you the probability that this name is, is either male or female. So when you can, you know, that's a pretty massive difference for, especially for clothing. Like you never want to send a guy something about, you know, women's clothing or vice versa. Okay. 99% of the time you don't want to do that. Right. And so if you can be a little bit smarter and allow that, and, and this is a free API. So it just, just adding that data into your, your database to be just a little bit more intelligent about your targeting, like that can be, that can have a massive effect. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great, that's really a great example. Um, that's it from my side. I guess um, here's your chance to like, where can people find out more about you and uh, what are you up to and where, where can I find you? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, my name is Trevor Fox. My website is trevorfox.com. Um, I write about anything that I find interesting in terms of tech. Um, I have, a, and then I do, uh, which is um, basically technical marketing. I have a blog called Google Apps Scripting that is just getting off the ground. If you want to learn basically how to create solutions for yourself, mostly with using Google Apps Script to network things together, um, that's what I write about with that one. Um, and then I have a Medium channel that I'm trying to get going that is uh, – more like the philosophical side of like what da how data plays into our lives and um, that's again where I publish the, um, the the that that app that you can post your own fake news thing so um, that's those are all my plugs <laughs> <laughs> great okay thank you Trevor and have a good day yeah thanks a lot for having me cool 
All right, so there you have it. This is Trevor's journey into technical marketing. Pretty interesting, right? Well, there is more to this interview. We actually had to cut it a little bit short. So if you want to see more on the full interview where we dive more into tools and techniques that he uses, then head over to techmarketer.io slash Trevor Fox, where we are gonna give you the full interview to watch over there. And if you enjoyed this video, then we are probably gonna do another video soon enough. So hit that subscribe button right over there and we'll bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian, till next time.